What's going on, YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back here with part two of my snapper case. Uh, well, I don't know. What do you want to call it? Uh, <laughs> snapper case fiesta? Uh, snapper case uh, bacchanal? I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is. If snapper cases floats your boat uh, or float your boat, float your boats, um, you're going to enjoy this next batch of them. And if they still drive you crazy, if you were that guy that was like always written into Bill Hunt with the digital bits, like, oh, I hate snapper cases. And I especially hate when they're not formatted for my 16 to 9 TV that I don't have yet. Arr. If you're that guy, you know, you might not want to watch this. It might like kind of bring back some uh, post-traumatic stress into your life and you don't want that. So, but you know, breathe deeply. We're going to power through the most hated case of the DVD era. Now the most beloved case of, uh, you know, flea market thrifters. Uh, looking for these kind of old vintage gems. The Snapper Cases, part two. All right, next round, we're going to start with some music-related things. Uh, I mentioned probably in some of my other videos that there was a bunch of DVD magazines, quote-unquote, that they were putting out. And there was a cool one with short films, but there was also this one which was you know, kind of looking more to be like a spin magazine on DVD called Circuit. Um, and this one's got some Moby stuff in a a weird uh, flaming lips thing where they have you know, it's just basically them dicking around in a in a hotel and you could use the scenes to like sequence how it all overlaps upon one uh, one another these different kind of musical interludes and uh, some chibo motto on there and um, the cool thing though is it's actually got some stuff from their um, Zyrica album which was like four CDs that you were supposed to sync together but they have part of it on here, so you could actually choose between the um, the audio tracks. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, there's some cool Keith and excerpt from Meeting People is Easy. I think maybe Meeting People is Easy hadn't fully dropped on DVD when this came out, so I had to get it. And uh, some Underworld and Paul Westerberg. That's a pretty good piece from a documentary. It's mostly just like pieces of documentaries, but still, it was cool. Uh, there was a decent amount of these. I never got any more than a, a handful, but... But like, yeah, they were looking to push boundaries with DVD, which was pretty cool. Um, I appreciated that. And so I got another uh, circuit. This one's got some REM and Beck and Cake and the Cardigans. Uh, that one Cardigans album around the time this dropped was really good. Um, was it uh, Gran Turismo? There you go, some Spine Edge. Yeah, these were cool releases. I should probably pick up some more of these. Guys. But they were pretty ambitious. I like that. Um, keeping it hard rock and metal. Some Sarah McLachlan. Yeah, I was a big Sarah McLachlan fan. Up until a point, she just kind of got like real like adult contemporary. Like she was kind of like uh, like well not folk. You know, just kind of folksy in the beginning, but like a little bit more interesting and she kind of got like i don't know soccer mom music after a bit so this actually gets up into that point taps out after adia but uh sweet surrender is actually a pretty good tune but it's got you know all the older good jams into the fire man that's a jam um yeah i wish i hadn't gotten quite so milk toast but whatever you don't own an artist man they just blossom and get mature and lame on their own <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had the, I think there was like a video VHS counterpart to that, so I had to get it on DVD. And uh, this is great, actually. It's just a short um, version with, I think, a couple audio tracks and the video. But um, total Chris Cunningham action. Bjork, all is full of love. And, yeah, very similar to the work he was doing for Autiker and things like that with uh, very hyper-realistic uh, robotics and things like that in the video. And this one's got, you know, robots in love. And, uh, it's really nice, short. Again, DVD being kind of ambitious with the DVD singles and stuff. Not that Laserdisc hadn't done that with uh, some, like, poop on there. Um, you know, Laserdisc certainly did it with the CD video era, but it was cool. I liked how ambitious they were, like, right off the bat with DVD. This was, like, within a couple of years of the format dropping, so... Um, there was a number of these I got from other artists, too, that weren't in Snapper cases, but... Uh, that's about it for music in Snapper. Let's drop some fantasy. Definitely have to have some uh, never-ending story. 
yeah, similar art to the laser disc. I always like how some of the special features are just, just lots of padding. Yeah. Interactive menus, subtitles. Yeah, makes it look like oh, it's got to be like 50 commentary tracks, and you start reading it, and it's like color photography on the back jacket. Yeah, or not jacket, but snap a case. Yeah, cool, uh, cool flick. It's weird, weird stuff. You can go widescreen or standard if you have a 4 to 3 television. And you uh, won't get mad about those black bars on your screen. Uh, I never did pick up the laser disc of Lady Hawk, so this is pretty much the same thing, but. <laughs> same artwork. And uh, special features uh, 5.1 surround sound. Production notes, scene access. Yeah, it's a special feature, all right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a 5.1 release. Full snapper glory. I picked this up at Circuit City. They used to have some wicked good sales. Again, you could flip it. That was a decent compromise. I mean, I would like to have had some artwork on the desk, but I saw this like two or three times in theaters. Uh, I was like the one fan of it. Martin Campbell's No Escape with Ray Liotta. And sure, you know, it was a little uneven, but it's fun stuff. And uh, yeah, it's got Lance Henriksen, who's not on the cover there. And of course, Ernie Hudson, Kevin Dillon. But yeah, it's a fun flick. Good uh, Graham Revell score. And uh, yeah, man. Dig that. It's got a Dolby Digital. The uh, laser disc I had as well, which was a little noisy if I remember correctly. I used to watch that a lot though. Just had um, Dolby Surround on it. So I figured I'd get the snapper. I think I saw that used at a FYE or something. This I bought brand new at Circuit City too. The New Lane Platinum series of Blade. Um, yeah, I watched this over and over again. This is one of my prime kind of, you know, DVD uh, test discs, you know, between this and eventually Fifth Element. And around the time this came, Bug's Life was one, especially for, like, colors and everything like that. But, yeah, the opening Blood Rave scene, yeah, I probably watched so many times. Uh, decent extras in here. Uh, of course, some DVD-ROM stuff that I don't think I ever uh, used because I never had a... DVD drive on my PC, or when I did, I didn't really care anymore, but I don't know, like checking out all these old special features, I guess maybe, like at the time, I didn't have one, so, but yeah, good, this one I think folds out, ooh, yeah, some bonus stuff, I actually, I think used one of those uh, proof of purchase, yeah, check that out, I know I did send in some to get some Warner Brothers gear, I think I got a free... I think I got a free copy of Contact for sending in some Warner New Line perfect purchase tabs. This is actually nice. I grabbed this at Circuit City Day of Release. It's pretty nice packaging. I kind of wish this had been released on Laserdisc. David O. Russell's Three Kings. This movie was, uh, you know, a huge critical darling at the time. And it's one of those movies that kind of slipped through the cracks. Nobody cares about it now. <laughs> um, but uh, pretty, uh, pretty entertaining uh drama with some comedic elements in there and uh the main characters are yeah eminently watchable george clooney mark Wahlberg, and ice cube and spike jones yeah decent flick it's got an ass map it's the only movie i think i have with an ass map in it so nice for this i think this is also a yeah multi-fold lots of special features for your fancy pc and yeah, I mean, it's, you know, kind of the equivalent of a laser disc gatefold. Yeah, open it up and just get butt tons of uh, stills and stuff from the film. I should watch this again. It's been a while. It has, like, super hyper washed out, yeah, kind of effects on the uh, the imagery. So, ah, Super Green movie. Super Green. The Matrix. Again, I don't have this on laser disc, but this is apparently essentially the same thing. Uh, snap a case this is one of the you know the killer apps for dvd everybody had to have a copy of this again i watched watched and tested this uh, numerous times decent amount of special features on there and yeah good w digital track another uh fold out 
some more info about all the DVD-ROM stuff I never checked out. <laughs> Someday. So, yep, I'll sell it to you for $100. Oh, wait, no, that's the laser disc that's worth that. Damn it. This I had to get an FYE. I think I bought it for a buck just because uh, I didn't go to the screening of it um, that they held for critics here, and I heard so much bad things about it that I had to see it. Ballistic X versus Sever. Yeah, man. This is up there with, you know, Battlefield Earth for classic stinkers of the time. Something happened, though. I think that was probably already like that when I got it. And it was probably like a sticker on the back got yanked some of it off. So it's not in uh, prime condition, but it's got HBO First Look, Dolby Digital, and uh, it's got some killer Banderas Lucy Lou hyper stylized action. Yeah, this wanted to be a hit. Didn't quite make it. But proud to have Ballistic X vs. Sever in the Broturian collection. <laughs> Uh, this actually wouldn't mind getting the laser disc. Uh, I love the spot gloss on this. This is actually a nice snapper. Another new line platinum of the Corruptor, and uh, I was disappointed in. I'm, I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, but I was disappointed in Fook was the replacement killer. So I thought that movie was pretty weak sauce, and like when it was trying to be John Woo, it just reminded me of just how much I'd rather be watching a John Woo movie, and. Uh, yeah, this was actually like a good like I don't know. It's kind of felt more like an HK film than than you know anything else Chinese Fat was doing in America at the time, and you know a decent you know gritty Chinatown action th crime thriller film from uh, James Foley. So uh, yeah, some special features and of course you know DVD ROM features and all that stuff. New Line was hot on that, um, but yeah, if you can see like the spot gloss is pretty badass with. Um, yeah, Chinese writing that'll kind of jump out. They did the same thing with uh, Seven on Laserdisc. New Line was hot on the spot glass. Um, some bullet holes there. But yeah, Chinese Fat was, you know, good in the film. Mark Wahlberg was coming up as a, you know, important actor. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a fun flick. Fukinese Dragons. Don't mess with them. Uh, this was something I had to get after watching um, this documentary on TV and was so psyched to get this and also so disappointed because um, this is all about making game what should have been the game of death and uh, lots of footage of the original you know concept of it of pretty much just fighting up a pagoda and fighting different styles to eventually, fight the master at the top who has you know no style and every style at the same time uh so it was you know supposed to be like this next notch in like bruce lee kind of getting his um chi kune do philosophy across to audiences so it was going to be like end of the dragon but you know even more so and it should have been really cool you know george lazenby would have been in it and and whatnot but too so this is featuring tons of footage that is great and should have been you know, a movie that we could have gone to see. Uh, but the bummer here is that I wanted to hear like the actual you know full story. And um, supposedly this has Bruce Lee's enacted storyline for the Game of Death, directed in Korea by John Little. And that special feature is nowhere to be found on this thing. And I don't know if it ever showed up anywhere. Um, so man, I was digging through these features. I was like a fool for like an entire night trying to find where they hid that. And, uh, you know, going on home theater forum and seeing if maybe somebody there had found it. And, yeah, it's just total vaporware. So I was bummed. I was really excited to check that out. I mean, it's still a great documentary, but uh, stepping into some horror. I picked this up at a church uh, flea market. Night Flyer. Great flick. Um, the late Miguel Ferrer. Kicking ass in there. Um, yeah, it's got some sort of sticker of the UPC, but that's fine. Um, nice new line release. And it's got 5.1. Cool artwork. Yeah, it's good stylish stuff. Let's see if you can see the... Uh, sorry about the posters and stuff. I think Vampire Hunter D was probably more visible on that than the actual disc art, but whatever. Uh, yeah, Shout Factory just, or Screen Factory just did a 
like a special edition of this, but I still have the old ass um, Turn of the Millennium uh, House on the Haunted Hill. I actually in ended up enjoying this more than I thought I was. Like this was like that kind of next wave after Scream, when like um, kind of like castle style filmmaking was like there was like a new kind of breed of that with like mostly wrestlers and like lots of makeup and stuff being the ultimate scare and you know this and 13 ghosts and things like that and uh this one wasn't too shabby i actually wouldn't mind watching this again i'll probably have to get that screen factory one and i enjoyed that lisa Loeb was in it for like a hot minute so my uh, wife actually made me pick this up at circuit city because she had seen it and thought i might dig it so i got it you know i actually had avoided it theatrically because i'm like screw that because you know i was all edgy and stuff this, uh, yeah, childhood classic. I saw this on cable back in the day. I had the laser disc. I think I sold that to uh, John Fralick, so hopefully he enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I had this widescreen. I had a lot of these uh, universal snappers that uh, Image was putting out. Uh, I know I had, like, They Live and some other ones, but I don't. I think I sold some of those guys. But uh, it's got Dolby Digital Mono on there. You know, nothing too uh, crafty, but a good. Alice Krieg kicking ass in there. Just saw her in uh, Gretel and Hansel. Uh, but yeah, Fred Astaire, Melvin Douglas, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., John Houseman, and Craig Lawson. Yeah, Craig Lawson, man. He was the man back in the day. Patricia Neal. Cool flick. Good slow burn ghost story movie. It's good. Yeah, old timey ghost story. But yeah, oh, Serpent in the Rainbow. That was another one I had. Here's another one of those Image Universal Snappers. Kiss of the Vampire. Good stuff. I haven't seen this in a dog's age either. I think the last time I watched this was probably on my old 4 to 3 uh, CRT, you know, 3 gun Sony. Uh, widescreen edition. Good. Also, uh, mono on here. Is that PCM? Really? Oh, yeah. Uncompressed PCM. DVD kind of breaking free from tradition and mixing it up. This is in 1.6 to 1.66 to one, so it's uh, difficult to scale unless it's uh, enhanced for your television already, which makes it nice. But so yeah, is this one? Is this? Yeah, it doesn't say if it's enhanced for 69. I'll have to watch it again. Ah, man, this. Um, is also a nice laser disc, but had to good get this Circuit City sale again. I remember when they, they used to have these; uh, they would have stickers all over these bad boys. So they'd be like usually a sticker at the top, sticker at the bottom eventually. But they'd have these huge wraparound stickers that would like come to like here, and you'd have to like peel it off and hope you didn't like trash the artwork. Uh, but yeah, Robert Wise is the haunting seminal horror film. Great stuff. Uh, it's funny. I was just watching the. Uh, Jan de Bont one recently and just how sucktastic that is. Black and white, some Dolby Digital on here. Mono, of course. But yeah, this is a this is a nice snapper. Very tasty. No uh yeah, no fold out there. But the haunting. A little bit newer classic, but still a classic. This is the 25th anniversary edition of The Exorcist, which is pretty much the same special edition I have on Laserdisc. Uh, got this at, guess where? Circuit City. Yeah, I was shopping there a lot. Uh, good special features on there. The documentary from the BBC, uh, William Friedkin and Blatty uh, commentary on there. Yeah, it's a good release. And this one, with that kind of otherworldly green there. And more of that creepy otherworldly green. Yeah, badass uh, triple fold there. It's a flipper, so you can decide what aspect ratio you want to watch it in. Choose widescreen. Man, I saw this in the theater. Um, mixed bag, but it does have its moments, man. That bit where uh, Leah comes through that bar, that vampire bar, and just kills everyone is pretty badass. And some of the uh, Jonathan Davis songs were pretty cool. I love that he uh, co-wrote co the score with uh, 
an old Oingo Boingo member. I thought that was pretty badass. So Richard Gibbs was on you know some of the earlier Oingo Boingo records. Um, yeah, interesting flick. Yeah, had its moments for sure. So for a misfire, it's a pretty pretty glorious misfire. And uh, my wife picked this up too. I think it might have even been like at a GameStop or something when I was like looking for old Silent Hill games. They would have DVDs and she occasionally picks them up. Astronaut's Wife, which is essentially a spacey Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> Pretty shamelessly uh, swiping it. And uh, Johnny Depp and Charlie Siron in there. Yeah. 5.1 widescreen, not too shabby. And bonus Lord of the Rings uh, web browser. So. There you go. <laughs> Screw the astronaut's wife. We're excited about Lord of the Rings. Man, whoever owned this originally didn't take their proof of purchase seals. Fools. But yeah. Snap it. And, oh man. We're getting to the good stuff here. George and Scott in the change link. My wife also picked this up at Circuit City, so yeah, she's got good taste. Uh, HBO Home Video Special Features, not really much, except for interactive menus, casting group bios, and subtitles, and chapter selections. Woof, don't knock yourself out there. Um, but, yeah, it's a good way to have the film at the time. There's those chapter breaks they were talking about. And uh, got some disc art, so that's pretty tasty. And I think this is the last snapper of the bunch. Man. Awesome George Slusser film, The Vanishing. Man, this movie scared the crap out of me. More like existential terror than like usual terror. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, oh man. It just puts the stink on you. Good stuff. Really, really taut thriller. W Digital Mono, Dutch with English subtitles, uh, Fox Lorber Image. Yeah, really good stuff. The Vanishing, good film about you know, obsession and sociopathy and maybe just straight up psychopathy, but awesome flick. The remake, bleh. Uh, so I think that's it for Snappers. We're fully snapped, man. So there you go. That's the small remaining batch of my DVD snapper cases in my smallish collection. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys saw something you liked in there. And if not, hopefully it was entertaining enough and you enjoyed that sweet snapping action. All right, thanks for hanging out, and I'll be back with some more you know, DVD Blu-ray stuff, um, Laserdisc stuff, who knows, maybe some movie stuff, anything, stuff, 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 you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, hopefully you guys will have smooth snapping action on all of your vintage DVDs. So cheers. Thanks for hanging out. Peace. Uh, this I bought brand new at Circuit City as well. Blade. Huh? <laughs>